How does the wind turbine work? Said another way, how does this weightless, invisible fluid we call air generate electricity? Wind turbines are common enough nowadays that we just accept them as things that stand tall and spin when the wind is blowing. But what is really going on here? First off, modern utility wind turbines are big, bigger than you might think. Each of these units are rated at 2.1 megawatts and will produce about 6.9 gigawatt hours per year, or enough to run about 600 homes. But when talking about how a wind turbine works, their size is defined by the rotor swept area, which when given a frame of reference is a lot of area. And these aren't the really big ones. Okay. So how do you turn this invisible fluid into something that charges our cell phones, turns on our lights, and powers our cities? One place to start is with the definition of kinetic energy. This states that a mass with a velocity has energy and is defined as 1 half mv squared. But hold on, does air have mass? This small tank is filled with compressed air. We can see that when we let the air out, the tank gets lighter by about 24 grams. So air has mass, and I think we all can agree that wind has velocity, so it must have kinetic energy. But this is where it gets interesting. I told you that these wind turbines are pretty big. So let's look at the mass of air that flows through the rotor in one second. This is called the mass flow rate, and this is a function of the air density, wind velocity, and rotor area. For example, using a wind velocity of 12 meters per second, we can calculate that the mass of air flowing through the rotor every second is 104,000 kilograms, or 230,000 pounds. That's the mass of a locomotive passing through the rotor every second. Second. Power, measured in horsepower or kilowatts, can be calculated as kinetic energy per time. It can be simplified to one half rho AV cubed. This equation represents the power in the wind. So, if we're gonna steal some of the power from the wind, we can't change the density in the area's fit. We're gonna have to take some of its velocity away, slow it down. That makes intuitive sense. Let's see if Newton can help. Newton's second law states that F equals ma, where F is force, m is mass, and a stands for acceleration. So now let's rewrite Newton's second law, but instead of acceleration, let's use a change of velocity written as delta v over a change of time written as dt. Again, we use mass flow rate for the mass per time. Newton tells us if we're gonna change the speed of an air mass, we're gonna need to exert a force upon it. And if we're gonna exert a force on the air, then the air is gonna exert a force on the wind turbine, Newton's third law. Now we can talk about efficiency. Efficiency is generically defined as the usable power divided by the available power. For a wind turbine, it is denoted as the coefficient of power. The efficiency the efficiency equation simplifies to the following equation where A is the induction factor and represents the percentage the wind has been slowed at the rotor. When the efficiency is plotted versus the induction factor, we get the following graph. This graph shows that we get peak efficiency when the wind is slowed at the rotor by one third. Plugging one third into our efficiency equation shows that the peak efficiency of any wind turbine is 1627, or approximately 59%. This theoretical limit was postulated in 1919 by Albert Betts and is now known as Betts' Law. 